हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दी साउथ एशियन फुटबॉल पॉडकास्ट प्रेजेंटेड बाय खेलनाव दिस इज द लेटेस्ट इन अ सीरीज ऑफ इनोवेशन बाय अस विद अ व्यू ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग विद द ब्रॉडर परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ फुटबॉल ऑल अक्रॉस साउथ एशिया आई एम योर होस्ट आशीष नेगी एज अ नेम सजेस्ट इन दिस पॉडकास्ट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑल द थिंग्स साउथ एशियन फुटबॉल एंड मेनली डीलिंग विद द कंट्रीज दैट दैट आर पार्ट ऑफ द सैफ uh with that said let me introduce the my guest on the episode 1 uh, joining us from bangladesh is arifin jaisal arifin is a doctor by profession but he has shown a passionate follower he has been a passionate follower of bangladesh football and asian football also over the years he also been featured on various platforms uh, including gold bangladesh uh, joining us from doha is our nepal correspondent sudesh baniya uh, you all must be familiar with sudesh from our recent coverage of nepal versus india games especially on our youtube channel which is khel now tv uh, also a special guest from pakistan uh, my old friend uh, sharukh shohel who features on uh, i think work for football pakistan.com for many years also involved in various football projects in pakistan and in asia also he has also worked for fox uh, fox sports sharukh is of course a old friend and you know it's good to have him on this podcast so today we're going to discuss on the various uh, uh, topics from south asia football especially considering that we have saf championship coming up next early next month uh, but start before coming into saf championship let's check uh, what's uh, the status of football in the various countries so starting with pakistan saruk bhai what's going on pakistani football can when we can see pakistan national team playing football again So thank you Ashish for the invitation it's really great to be here and discussing uh, South Asian football with uh, everyone Unfortunately Pakistani football is not going to be in action anytime soon as you guys know Pakistan is currently banned by FIFA due to political interference there are two parallel bodies one being the national normalization committee recognized by FIFA the other is a uh, local party led by led by the Shaksha group who have taken over the PFF house and since uh, late march pakistan has been under this occupation and a subsequent fifa ban saf championship is something that pakistanis also look forward to having never won it uh, we you know every 2 3 years whenever it happens we look forward to at least putting up a competition and reaching a semi final place but uh, this year is not going to happen and this overall issue has been going on for the last 6 years so followers might know that pakistan didn't take part in the 2015 edition as well we returned back for 2018 but again we are missing out on uh, 2021 and because of this issue that has been going on for some time and because of uh, this fifa ban pakistan is unable to take part and since the issue isn't looking likely to be resolved in the near future i think pakistan is going to be out uh, for the for the considerable future time as well uh, just to give an idea to the viewers and listeners about it is there any football going on of course the fifa ban is there anything domestically for clubs if there are any club who are active or everything is done by say non uh, pakistan football federation organization to do the local football at the local stage Yes, so the parallel body that took over the PFF house, uh, Shark Shark Group, they are doing the, currently the Pakistan Premier uh, Pakistan Premier League, uh, which is happening across three cities in Pakistan. The first leg of that just concluded in Multan. Unfortunately, since it's not a recognised event by FIFA, AFC, or technically even uh, the regional levels, you're not going to see any team going to the AFC Cup slots. Apart from that, there was an under 19 event as well recently held, and they are tournaments. Of course, football is very popular in certain areas of pakistan there's a massive tournament going over in uh, baluchistan at the moment in quetta where there's a chief minister cup being taken uh, in part by a number of different teams from around the country and football is going on but unfortunately if there isn't a federation recognized by fifa at the pff house then a centralized domestic structure just really goes out of the window and that whatever is happening is happening on a very ad hoc basis Okay, so uh, now coming to Arifin. Arifin, uh, of course, uh, Bangladesh have sacked their uh, head coach, you know, and brought in Oscar to replace him. Uh, that's one news from Bangladesh. Another news is that you guys now bringing a Nigerian striker. If I if I'm not wrong, his paperwork yeah. is still going on. I think AFC need to approve it. So yeah. let us know what's going in Bangladesh domestically and uh, you know overall where Bangladesh football is going on at this stage. Oh uh, well. Uh... Well, Ashish, very well. It's uh, it's nothing special. I mean, uh, the 
uh, if you talk about the domestic scene, uh, the league has just concluded with uh, Bushundara Kings uh, winning it uh, with huge margin, you know, 13 points. And uh, well, uh, it, it was a very long season. I mean, it has always been, there has always been long seasons in Bangladesh and that's why we have lost uh, two football seasons since uh, 2008. Uh, we were supposed to have completed uh, 14 seasons since 2008 and we have, you know, just 12, you know, of them completed. And, you know, there, there was just this one domestic cup competition. The other one was uh, dis discarded uh, due to, you know, Corona and various factors. And then coming to the national, national team, yes, uh, you're right. You know, there is this uh, Nigeria born naturalized footballer name, name is uh, Elita Kingsley. Uh, he is, uh, he is 31 years of age and he's a striker. And well, uh, he has made it into the preliminary squad, but uh, subject to, you know, AFC's clearance, you know, uh, there are there are a couple of paperwork, uh, you know, needs to be checked and uh, we are, we're not yet sure if, uh, you know, uh, we can get him uh, in Maldives. Uh, so let's see. I mean, he can be, you know, a ray of light uh, into our, you know, in a scoring department. I mean, we, we have been suffering, you know, all these years and uh, in that department. And um, yes, uh, regarding the coach. Yes, uh, Jamie Day was uh, was sacked, and uh, he has returned to England uh, yesterday. And uh, the new coach is uh, Oscar Brujon. He who isn't, you know, any anybody, an alien to this uh, region, to Indians and Bangladeshis, or even Maldives. I mean, and uh, he 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 coaches Boshundara Kings here in our league, and he has won everything. So uh, yeah, let, I mean, let's 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 see what happens. Uh, just just quick follow up question on the same. Uh, so is he going to coach club and country both? Well, yes, uh, he yes uh, he is in the you know he is in uh, Boshundara Kings still, and you know the the next season you know isn't going to happen anytime soon. I mean it it, it, it is supposed to take place in uh, in in later part of this year say uh, last week of november or early december so he he's kind of free and he has signed up for this soft tourney you know and only. Uh, okay. yes only soft tourney and so maybe maybe uh, you know uh, to not you know getting you know into i mean what i mean is you know he has pre season to attend which is club and so he just signed up for this tough championship only so far so i think i think uh, this is one i remember armando doing something similar sorry bhai you might remember you know 2011 12 he used to coach dempo and then he also did uh, indian team uh, job for 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 a small period of time so i think there are lots of conflict of interest also arises that time also the question was asked you know uh, he was on a Caribbean tour with the national team and then he was kind of signing players for Dempo. So these are all just reported by various outlets that, that time. Uh, Sudesh, uh, of course, we have touched upon Nepal a lot. Anything new since last we spoke on this channel and uh, uh, during the India-Nepal game? Anything new happened for the... I think I read your tweet about Bhimal Garthi Magar finally making his comeback. Uh, I think likely to play Nepal uh, Pro League. Uh, yeah, let's start with Bimal's news. Uh, I got told yesterday that Bimal Garthi Magar is close to a deal with Three Star and he's going to start in the A Division League, which is going to happen. But a couple of clubs have not agreed upon the terms, so it's still in dilemma that the league is going to happen or not in Nepal. Uh, and regarding the national team, the national team is right now in Doha and they're training in Qatar University's ground and they played against second division Qatar side. Uh, Al Bida and news is that they have won and they're on course uh, to playing another friendly with Oman this 26th and after that they will fly back to Maldives. So 
uh, nothing new that's coming out of the Nepalese camp and they're just training and they will just directly fly back to Maldives from here. The only update that I have for now is Rohit Chand is expected to join the team in Maldives and he's now in Indonesia playing for Persija Jakarta. Uh, uh, Sarab bhai, just a question. Uh, of course, the Bangladesh now have got this Nigerian player to play for them. Do you remember anybody else who, who doesn't have roots to South Asia playing for any of SAF countries? Uh, not particularly in SAF, I think, because uh, in Pakistan I mean, uh, we have uh, we haven't had some. Lots people, of but I do Pakistani remember origin we had playing, one, nah, right? Yeah, yeah. Pakistani origin players do have like one tie or the other, but I think a good example would, uh, of this would be from India, I believe, Arata Zumi back in the 2013 SAF Championship. Yeah. He technically did not have roots in that sense and uh, he had been playing in the I-League for some time and then he got an Indian passport and he ended up playing for the Indian no, team No, no, but well. he had, uh, if I remember, one of his, I think father or mother, uh, you know, was Indian. So, that's one thing and then he got married to Indian girl only. So, it's, yeah, it's not like that's that like a, completely That's like the closest, conne- <laughs> closest connection. Yeah, just like, you know, Pakistani player in UK, they have British mother or Pakistani father then playing for Pakistan. It was similar. He was, of course, Indian origin guy. Uh, and of course, then he took Indian passport. So, which was a very difficult for, for foreigners to leave their foreign passport. Now, he's settled in India coaching, uh, I think, one of the Reliance Youth Foundation Academy in uh, Mumbai, if I remember correctly. So, I think uh, his father uh, was uh, Indian and mother, of course, was Japanese. So, you can't say that he was completely, uh, you know, uh, who doesn't have any roots to India. So, I, I'm not sure of Sri Lanka. I don't remember uh, anybody who yeah. doesn't have roots. And similar thing, I think Maldives also. I don't, don't remember Bhutan, nothing. Maybe Afghanistan. Uh, I'm not sure of that also. Afghanistan, mostly the players that have played in South Asia for the respective countries, they tend to be like origin players. So, it's not a naturalization case, more of an origin mm-hmm. situation. We have seen this in like Kyrgyzstan a lot, where you have like a couple of players playing out for the national team. But I don't think there's a legitimate case in, you know, as you explained with Arata Izumi as well, there isn't a legitimate case in South Asia. But I think this new Bangladesh example, and I was following this a lot, I think he has got his um, Bangladeshi passport, yes. Arifin, if I'm not wrong. He, yes. He's just waiting on clearance from AFC. Yes, he's just waiting for clearance. And he has been here in Bangladesh for about 10 years. And uh, he has uh, he has married a Bangladeshi girl. Okay, mm. okay. So, I think that's going to be a very interesting yeah. example of how that works out. And uh, yeah. I think strikers are something uh, that are, aren't in demand or aren't present in uh, most uh, South Asian teams as well, right? Finishing is a constant, constant problem. Not that India... Uh, has that problem thanks to Sunil Chetri and I, Ashish, I'll throw this back to you. Obviously, Sunil Chetri is up there. He's probably one of the best players ever to come out of the South Championship, uh, South SAF area if you look at it as a whole. But my, my genuine question to you is that, you know, what happens after Sunil? Who's going to <laughs> score the goals? Yeah. And uh, let's, let, let's assume that, you know, he's relatively injury-free. If he gets injured, in a match, who's going to step up? Because I think it's a big problem for India as well. There isn't a, is a person that can, you know, pass. There, there were names before, but there isn't a genuine replacement yet. I think, I think we Indian football have spent crores of rupees to find new striker, and we're still trying to figure it out who can score goals. Uh, JJ was there. He was, he was, he was doing good, good amount of scoring alongside Chetri. Then he got a serious knee injury. Still haven't recovered fully from it. We didn't have a couple of last season properly in domestic, so dropped by national team coach. At this stage, the youngsters are coming up, but I'm not still not sure they can score the amount of goals Sunil Chetri have scored for India. So ideally, what we are, I think the national team coach is trying to also do now that get the midfielders involved and score those goals, you know. Uh, talking about currently at present time, I think if, if Sunil Chetri doesn't play and then who can be our scorer? Manveer Singh, I think he was the top scorer in the last half championship, if I remember, which India lost. India took to Kanda 23 team. Uh, but then if you see, he's playing for as a wing back for ATK Mohan Bagan, by the way. He's a centre forward, number 9 by nature. And ATK Mohan Bagan used him as a wing back. And then now slowly, national team also starting using as a right winger. And I think that's what I, I started hitting. I have raised this multiple times on various platforms. Uh, don't convert these number nine into the wingers. If they are not a winger, don't convert them. You know, at least for national team, they should play as a number nine. And now, after going to ATK Mohan Bagan, he has scored goal for ATK Mohan Bagan from that right side forward or wing back, whatever role Habas have given them. It's a more of a wide forward role. 
and but now national team coach also started using a right winger and he is not a right winger by by any mean he is naturally he is number 9 uh, i am not sure who can score goals but for one of two matches i think uh, somebody like manveer singh he can score goals uh, anru thapa from midfield he can score goals but not the goals sunil chetri has scored for us but maybe one or two goals they can chip in in between you know brandon uh, still not scored many for india i think he, but he has potential to score those goals and i am not sure for other than manveer singh of course if farooq choudhary has come in he scored in recent against nepal you know uh, but still not a prolific goal scorer like sunil chetri so i think it's a big question for for indian football indian super league aff indian coach everybody you know we we want sunil chetri at least to be there at least till the asia cup if we qualify hopefully we do and that should be the our ultimate aim you know after playing 2019 edition and doing well in the 2019 edition that we should play the next edition you know it should should be not like the 2011 and 2015 we did not qualify so i think that's what sunil chetri might be also aiming you know to keep himself fit and play that uh, championship and then retire on top you know which i think not uh, in recent time not heard of of any south asian footballer uh, footballer to play asia cup he already plays two time and then to play one more time will be i think fantastic achievement for him i think it will put him on the is already on top i think i'm not sure because we haven't seen the 60s and 17 football uh, all across south asia i think for me i think he will be the because i watch him live will be the best footballer coming up from south asia you know that's one thing uh, another thing uh, uh, which i want to ask it is regarding uh, your favorite south saf memory sarukh bhai uh, and of course sunil chetri also uh, made his debut in pakistan you know which is another a uh, connection with pakistan regarding sunil chetri i think i remember him doing well there so aapki favorite memory kya hai saf ki jeete to nahi ho but uske alawa memory to i think jeete to hum bilkul nahi hai but unfortunately we've never reached the final as well we reached the semi final last time which no one was expecting um, but my favorite memory would be nepal versus pakistan in the 2013 saf championship and i was there on that occasion inside the dashrat rangasala and 30000 nepalis were obviously screaming match had sold out and uh, i wasn't expecting pakistan to you know uh, score this quickly but hasan bashir scored that uh, terrific volley from outside the box and the crowd went silent and i was the only one screaming from the stands so it was it was a really amazing moment to see and then uh, later 16 year old or 15 year old bimal gharti magar scores in injury time and levels the game so <laughs> very bitter sweet memory in that sense but i think that was a fantastic memory and we had a decent team in that saf championship too you, i think you took a huge risk by screaming in, in inside the stadium <laughs> when you are surrounded by all the nepalese fan you know and I have huge respect for Nepalese people for the passion of football they have, you know. And I think we are discussing offline regarding the the under achievement of Nepal in SAF Championship. You know, they have been good team but not done well in the SAF Championship. So this can we hope that this will change for Nepal this time? Uh, what do you think? Especially considering India is not preparing as seriously as Nepal, Maldives, and Bangladesh. Yeah, hopefully Nepal can do it this time. You know, the coach has always been vocal about. Uh, making SAF championship as his ultimate target and like Pakistan we've also kind of never reached the SAF championship final and as you saw with the indian uh, friendlies nepal actually has something going on the preparations were done really well and this camp will be kind of to fix those last minute issues so we have a decent chance but as we already discussed we've always underperformed and chances are that we can also end up that way this time as well so hopefully we can win it but we you never know when it comes to saf championship and about and what is your favorite memory from saf championship you know it's like a world cup for our, our, our side <laughs> of the world you know we don't play any more I mean, any big tournament than this yeah i actually have two uh, first one definitely should be bimal gatti magar scoring the last minute equalizer against pakistan a 15 year old guy and after that i mean he was considered the next big thing in apple league football and the second one would be sagar thapa scoring a free kick against bangladesh i think it was in 2011 graham roberts was our coach and it was the absolute last moment of the match and he scored somewhere from around the center line that was that was a free kick that went rounds and since it it was just kicking off we used to go to youtube and just specifically you know watch that goal i think those are the two memories that stand out when south championship is mentioned to me uh arifin 
what about you what's your favorite memory and then of course we'll come into the bangladesh preparation also well uh, we haven't gone past the group stage in last uh, several editions so you know the favorite memory goes way back to 2005 sub championship in in pakistan uh, the semi particularly against uh, pakistan it was it wasn't just about the result but because uh, but about the brand of football that we played back then under argentine coach andres cusiani you know we have played a fabulous uh, you know passing game and it, and if i if i remember correctly uh, that was uh, the debut tournament for uh, jesh rahman dishan rahman from uh, premier league yes yes jesh made his uh, debut in that tournament fresh from uh, fulham that i think was a major moment from south asian football as well you know yeah. pakistan started this trend of using pakistani yeah. origin players and then other countries got uh, did it as well and they did it better than us and they <laughs> won the saf championship afghanistan being an example and we've you know uh, we've been stuck with our problems since then no so uh, then i will come to my my favorite saf championship memory of course uh, uh, india has won various tournament but 2011 was a special considering that india was coming from asia cup and afghanistan joined the saf you know and thought that brought lots of attention of afghanistan football fans Uh, to south asian football and uh, the way we are playing under savio madeira and you know um, bob hotton just left and the amount of goals sunil chetri scored in that tournament you know and especially from his header that's why i think i was in 12th class that moment and that was one of my favorite memory and considering uh, afghanistan defeated us in group stage if i if i remember correctly and then in final we defeated them and then these afghanistan fans they were all over the internet saying that india paid uh money to that singapore sick referee to <laughs> give, give, give favorable decision i think and that that brought lots of attention to south asian football you know because before that 2009 if you remember correctly india sent their under 23 team india won that championship with the under 23 team you know and i think i, I felt saf saf cup was dying uh before that afghanistan came in that brought lots of attention uh, not just from afghanistani but other countries uh, other fans also you know and i think that 21 championship it took place in india only in delhi empty stand i think nearly i think 5 to 10000 people maximum came but i think that brought overall lots of attention to south asian football not just to indian football and i think that will remain special other than that 2015 edition was also special when uh, stephen won it in, uh, in uh, it took place in kerala and india won it so i think these two chaps have championship look special to me of course haven't seen the past one so i can't say uh, uh, what happened in say early 2000 and uh, haven't watched those saf championship live so that's one from my side so how bangladesh is preparing uh, can, can you summarize arifin bhai where they are doing are they playing any friendlies or just doing a uh, training camp only that yeah well uh, i mean uh, as i said i mean the le- the league took too much time to finish and so we we uh, we did not have uh, you know any any camp you know I mean, any long camp uh, like you know Maldives or Nepal are attending. But yes, uh, we have played uh, 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 you know three friendlies in Kyrgyzstan against the host and their Olympic site and also Palestine. But you know it it took all wrong turn. I mean uh, you know uh, you know after uh, Jamie Day got sacked and you know uh, now Oscar Brujon uh, has come to the scene and yeah I mean uh, I mean. the training uh, ha- ha- has maybe started today i don't know i mean i, I have i have lost you know i mean I- i'm not really you know 100% focused right now because you know so much thing is happening uh, you know surrounding bff you know their uh, you know their judgment regarding regarding the squad the kind of players they are calling up so well i have lost my focus but, but yeah i and you know personally i don't really you know you know believe believe in these you know long camps you know either but yeah it would have been nice uh, to 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 put the team together for about you know like 10 10 to 14 days but uh, that that is not happening so let's see what happens you know that the players are you know uh, the the players are, have been playing you know i mean there, there should be no issue regarding uh, regarding fitness uh, so you know it's it's about now now the, now the combination under the new coach so let's see what happens okay 
so we are supposed to uh, join by azam from maldives so of course he he's with, he's with national team uh, in doha they are preparing they have a longer long camp in uh, uh, in qatar uh, so Ma- he is not here i think due to some reason so he hopefully he will join us in next episode uh, similarly uh, uh, sri lanka is also training um, so desh can you touch upon we are what sri lanka is doing right now to, for the preparation of this af championship Yeah, initially they were supposed to come to Qatar in September 8th, but last minute change of plans has landed them in Riyadh and they are now training in Saudi Arabia for the uh South Championship and news is that they will directly fly to Maldives from Saudi Arabia. So a three of the teams, Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka are having kind of a similar plan when it comes to training right now. हमारे पास ही कुछ प्लान नहीं है इंडिया के पास सो सैड कंसीडरिंग दैट ए एफ एफ गेव द ऑप्शन टू आई गॉस टीम टू होल्ड अ कैम्प बट अफकोर्स दिस इज नॉट ऑफिशियली रिपोर्टेड बाय ए एफ एफ नॉट ऑफिशियली कोटेड बाय ए एफ एफ बट सम मीडिया रिपोर्ट सेट दैट आई गॉस टीम सेड नो टू दोज कैम्प आई थिंक आई दर इज uh to confident to win it or either he is not giving any importance to the saf championship but i think he should, he it should be knowing that if india doesn't win it he will just become a second foreign co- uh, foreign coach not to win the saf championship you know uh considering that stefan won it with the senior team in 2015 then uh in uh, 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 i think 2018 uh, edition uh, he went to the विद अंडर ट्वेंटी थ्री टीम एंड फिनिश इज रनर अप सो इन इंडिया की कुछ प्रिपरेशन कुछ खास नहीं है होपफुली द फाइनल स्कॉड स्टिल इज नॉट अनाउंस सो आई थिंक इज गोइंग टू गेट अस काइंड ऑफ सेम स्कॉड विच ही टुक टू नेपाल एंड वी आर आई थिंक नाउ डिपेंडेंट ऑन आर सुनील छेत्री टू स्कोर दोज गोल्स एंड कीप इंडिया फ्लोट थ्रू अट द चैम्पियनशिप बट लुक्स टफ आई थिंक दिस दिस पाकिस्तान इज नॉट देयर बट एंड दिस माइट बी अ कॉम्पिटेटिव साहब चैम्पियनशिप कंसिडरिंग दैट देयर इज नॉट I, I think on paper, on paper, India looks strong, but I think on field there will be not much difference, uh, considering that Nepal and Bangladesh and Maldives are preparing uh, better than India at the, at this stage, and also Bhutan is not playing, Pakistan is not playing. So hopefully uh, next championship we'll have Pakistan playing. You know, uh, now just let me take uh, a few more stuff. Sarukh uh, uh, Bai, uh, what about the Pakistan uh, national team players who are not playing Europe? You know, their captain. uh who, who also came to india play those under 23 friendlies and i think he signed for bahrain club is he still in middle east or is back home now yeah so i think you're referring to sadam hussain he he's back here he played uh, in northern cyprus as well played in bahrain he's back and uh, a lot of our players are also you know the ones that are abroad are, are still playing you've got a uh, Uh, are four uh, Danish uh, quarters who are playing in Denmark various leagues a goalkeeper Yusuf Bhatt uh, Hasan Bashir Muhammad Ali and then you also have Adnan Muhammad all of these guys are playing over there and then we have a couple of others as well that were that can be gotten for the Pakistan national team there were rumors that Adil Nabi who was playing for uh, OFI Crete in the Greece Super League he became a uh, became a big hero in Greece because he helped save them from relegation from the top tier with a last last minute free kick so he was in contention that we could have gotten him for the national team and then ayas zahid became ineligible after he played for norway but you have etazaz hussain who's uh, playing for molde as well an old protege of ole gunnar solskjaer so a lot of players pakistan does have this option and on paper if pakistan were really to build a, a top team and put them through the paces obviously i think we could finally get our uh, first saf championship win but that's never yeah so i would also want to ask uh, khali mullah khali mullah khan you know yeah yeah we have arifin aap jao aap you can say bolo yeah khali mullah i was i was just asking about so, khali mullah khali mullah right. is back he was playing in a, in the iraq premier league uh, last time out he came back to pakistan and he has it actually played for the national team since 2015 because he at that time he got into a fight with the Pakistan Football Federation and then even in 2018 for the World Cup qualifiers and all of them he wasn't able to take part uh, but he is like probably the best local footballer we've produced over the last 10 years he's gone on played in a number of different countries but the problem is that we've wasted kalimulla his same uh, age group players like satam satullah mohammad adil because we haven't played in the last 6 years the way we should have and you know whenever we do 
start playing regularly in 2018 when the team was restored SAF championship nobody expected us to do well even I didn't because we didn't have any preparation but reaching the semi-final uh, for the first time in like you know 13 years and then later we played against Palestine and had like a 2-1 loss but we showed signs of recovering but every time we do that it's like one step forward and five backwards so the reason I was interested in Kalimullah Khan and I, I'm sure Arifin is also interested because he came through Pakistani domestic football, you know, unlike your other uh, football stars who have played in Europe, but they are kind of Pakistani origin players. So he is true and true, you know, fully Pakistani, I will say. So that's why I was interested, you know, and uh, he went, I think that's a good example for the Indian Indian footballer also and say other uh, Nepalese and Bangladesh footballer also. Indian players are now satisfied to play in ISL because the, the amount of money they are paid, it's, I think it's considerably huge if you compare to Europe, so they're not ready to go to Europe. But I've, many, many fans believe that Indian players should try in Asian League. Uh, Sharuk Bhai, with your experience working with various players of Pakistani origin in Europe also now, we touch upon Khalim Khan, uh, Khan also. How do you see that uh, should Indian players or say Bangladeshi players, should which countries they can target in Asia to play for? A hundred percent. I think we need to get our places. This is not just Pakistan or India or Bangladesh. All of the South Asian players because we know that our leagues are good enough to a certain level, right? After that, it's it's time to grow abroad and try try your luck elsewhere and improve as a player. A very good example of this is, I'm sure you know, uh, Sandesh Shingan going to Croatia and trying out there, right? So, I think that's a, that's a great example for uh, Indian players to follow. And I'm sure he must have you know taken a pay cut of some sort because the amount of money that you would be yeah that you have in the isl and then you would be paid in that uh, in that division in europe right it would be different but thailand is a very good option it's a very competitive league you can look at uh, malaysia as well j league i think is a bit high for some of our players but the options are, are, are there if you look at uh, maybe some of the best in Asia. You have the Saudi Pro League, UAE Pro League, Qatar Stars League. So I think this is all there and the players from South Asia really need to do this because if they stay in South Asia, they're not going to improve. And this is why, you know, I was a bit of disappointment there that Chetri could have at least, you know, there were work permit issues at a number of clubs, but he should have, you know, had one decent stint at, in Europe where he could have been playing week in, week out. And we've not really had that example from South Asia if you look at it as a whole, right? No single player going, maybe Europe or even other countries and I think playing only, week only, in, week out. Only decent example I can give is Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, you know. Of course, he was a goalkeeper yeah. competing yeah. with the very top goalkeeper, but then played in Europa League. I think that's a, that itself an achievement. And then he was kind of forced to come back to India because of the national team selection uh, priorities. He, he, he needed a game time and of course, you know. Uh, I think, but goalkeeper doesn't get... Uh, you know, if he's competing with good goalkeeper, you d he generally stay plays in cup games. Uh, but forward players, mid outfielders, they can get games right from bench. Also, they can get games. So I think I think Asian leagues, Thai, Thai league is very good now. Uh, there was some interest on the uh, Parveer Das, uh, ATK Mohan Bagan, right wing back or right back from Australian club, uh, which I only I only revealed. Uh, if you remember, there used to be a coach in uh, India under 23 team, Arthas Papas, who used to coach Dampo yeah. also. Uh, the batch of Gurupreet. So, I think there was some connection through him, but eventually he stayed in India. I think ultimately, the because these players usually think about Europe, like Sandesh have done, is when they are 26, 27, you know, and similar time, Chetri went to sporting also. I think that is not yeah. correct age, if you ask me, going to Europe. Our player need to leave maximum when they are, say, 22, 21, 19, I think. After 22, I think I think European clubs they will not take our player very seriously, you know. Especially if if our player just have one passport. So, for example, a Pakistani player can take another citizenship, you know, and then they, it, it became easy, easier for them to play. I think something with uh, similar with Nepal also. I think Nepal also allowed dual citizenship. I am not sure. Uh, so this uh, there was example of a South Korean a Nap Nepalese player playing in South Korea. You were telling in the last video that he has join the national team. So, I think Nepal also doesn't allow uh, dual citizenship, right? No, but that player is Manish Sangye and he was kind of taken to South Korea when he was very young and when he came to Nepal to get his citizenship, he got in the national team camp. So, it is not a dual citizenship kind of thing. He always wanted to be a Nepali citizen and he is in the camp now as well. So, it's, it's not a, uh, a situation like that. I think both Nepal and India don't allow dual citizenship and that's uh, the case that it is right now. 
Arifin, what about Bangladesh? Uh, what is the status of citizenship in Bangladesh? Uh, do they allow dual passport? Like Pakistan yeah, and yeah, Pakistan? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we allow dual, yeah, we allow dual citizenship. W- one word for that, Jamal Bhuyan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that's yeah. like a yeah, yeah. beautiful example yeah. of how that's worked out for Bangladesh, yeah. I think. And I think uh, just touching upon yeah. this, uh, Jash Rahman, uh, one of the close ally and friend, Mr. Chopra, uh, could, have, <laughs> Michael could, have, Chopra. could have played for India if I think he was dream. Uh, and of course, I should not say it, but of course, he was he wanted to play for England. And I think I, I was told by various uh, people, especially of South Asian origin in, in UK, uh, with I, whom I work closely, that you know, uh, Chopra was told by Jash Rahman that you should join India. You know, don't wait for the call up for England; it's not going to happen. So, do you know anything about Sharuk regarding same? Yeah, I, I, I remember reading India, something like, about. Uh, yeah, I, I remember reading something about this, and I think what happened was that uh, Chopra was the top scorer in in the championship that season. And David Nugent, who was also from the championship, I think, uh, ended up getting a call from England, but Chopra didn't. And I think um, that's when this conversation with I think Zesh happened that he told them that you should try for your for your roots rather than aiming for England. And we've not really had an example, right? A lot of our uh, Pakistani origin players did harbor uh, England ambitions. Adil Nabi was very prominent, one of them. His two younger brothers have a played for uh, for Pakistan, and and at one point all three of them were playing for various uh, academy levels at West Bromwich Albion, but. Uh, uh, I think uh, at this moment we've not really seen anyone going that far. I think the only exception we've seen is uh, uh, is uh, Ghayas Zahid, who became the first Pakistani origin player to play in the Champions League. He played at uh, the Bernabeu against uh, Madrid, and then later in an emergency situation he got a Norway call, and he also scored on his Norway debut as well. So, but we really wanted to get him for the Pakistan national team, and he was getting interested. But the problem is that you know. He, I believe now he's cup tied. He can't really get him now. Uh, Sarubai, as you're aware that I went to Manchester, you know, uh, the club invited me and yes, I saw you're very the academy. jealous, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and I met with the academy head, uh, head Nick Cox. I think, and I was uh, telling uh, one of your friend, a common friend, uh, Mr. Nawaz in UK only that, uh, and at that time I told him back in, uh, you know, March uh, 2020 that about Jidan Iqbal. He is another Pakistani origin player, and I think he took a very early call. So sadly for Pakistan, he has taken now option of Iraq. What do you say on this? You know, uh, and I'm sure the Pakistan football is nowhere to be at, the, at this stage to attract the talent of uh, of, of player who's playing for Manchester United under 23 team. Now I think Jidan Iqbal is now you know uh, uh, he's he's now declared that he will play for uh, Iran. So what do you say on that? Because he's another player at United because I follow United very closely. Hannibal Masbury, he has now also decided not to represent uh, France. He has uh, uh, picked Tunisia and Africa as, a, as as his primary country. So do you think that the, the pattern is changing now? We will see these players to pick their uh, origin country early in their career now? I think that might be the case. And if you take Zidane Iqbal's example, that the problem with Zidane is that he's eligible for like three countries at the same time time you know he has Iraq he has uh, the UK as well and then he has Pakistan too so the the problem with the country like Pakistan is that we don't have a structured approach to getting these players a lot of this work has and is still being done by footballpakistan.com of scouting these players yeah, and send them to play for Pakistan yeah. and the circus at the PFF that we've seen is so uh, so just you know utterly disappointing that couple of years ago they tried calling up Ghayaz Zahid without actually ever speaking to him and they emailed or sent a letter to his club and it turned out they sent it to the wrong club so that's the level and this was national news in Norway that the Pakistan FA does not even know where Ghayaz Zahid is playing so this is the sort of situation you're doing and when you deal with these players I I personally spoke to Adil Nabi uh, once as well about playing for Pakistan and these guys do show interest in all but the the problem is if you don't approach them the right way and then you have a you have to have a vision you convince Gayas I to come and play and you're in the middle of a FIFA ban that's not really going to fly well with him right and these guys are already a bit scared you know when they when they they are Pakistanis and South Asians in that way when they hear about their extended family of what actually happens on ground it's going to become difficult to convince them so, to play for these countries yeah so while we are on this origin topic, yeah, I agree with 
Yeah, I, I was coming to you only. I was your yeah. origin oh, yeah, topic. Fine. Best South Asian footballer currently is playing in Premier League. Is Bangladeshi by the way, Hamza Chaudhary. So, Arifin, yeah. bhai, what is he going to come to and play for Bangladesh? Are, have Federation made any approach to him? Have you heard anything about? Because I am not sure he will get his England call up. You know, just like uh, Jash and uh, Michael Chopra and all. So, have you heard anything about it? Because he is at playing the the top level. You know, I think one of the best South Asian origin footballer right now. Yeah, well, uh, no. I mean, I mean, BFF hasn't, you know, you know, reached him properly. I mean, not directly. And and Hamza Chaudhary has stated this in one of his uh, recent interviews. Actually, uh, I mean, a couple of months back, and so you know, during that interview uh, to one of our Bangladeshi journalists, uh, Rashid Bhai, uh, he said that uh, he will uh, he will wait for English call up uh, for you know up to you know 2022 FIFA World Cup, and then he will genuinely consider uh, you know to switch his uh, you know footballing nationality. So. That's about is he eligible it. I mean, for just for Bangladesh really, and England? Know, done, you know anything? <laughs> well, uh, he's also eligible for uh, Grenada, the Caribbean nation. Grenada. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But Ashish, I'll, I'll add a point here. But right? but, it, but he has but but he has but but he has this uh, strong connection to you know Bengali culture in England. He belongs to the you know British Asian community, and you know he has. Also come to Bangladesh several times up to you know 2015, and you know he can speak you know Bengali, well you know better than Jamal Bhuiya even. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ashish, uh, Sharuk, 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 you were saying something. So that's the relief. Yeah, I mean, that's the relief. Hmm. yeah. Yeah, just adding a point to the, the, the problem that uh, Arifin is mentioning here is, is very hmm. genuine in the sense that. The federations in South Asia, those that can get origin plays, they, they they don't they don't do it properly. If you want a play like Hamza Chaudhary, is this is not going to happen over a phone call. This is where someone like uh, Kazi Sulaudin needs to go watch a Leicester City game, needs to sit down with uh, Hamza Chaudhary one to one, take the coach with him, and sell him a long term vision. And telling him how important he can be. This is not something that can be done Absolutely. over a phone call. This is a big player, and this he needs to be Absolutely. treated with respect. And you need to roll out the red carpet. I think, I think if you, if you ask me, uh, th- that's one thing. And just Absolutely. consider that I mean, say somebody uh, from was... Chaudhary is. Yeah, just just let me complete, and I will come to Arifin. That somebody like Hamza Chaudhary is playing for Bangladesh in the SAF Championship. We can have this summer tournament instead yeah. of. Uh, taking place in August and September, just have it in a say June and July window, and somebody like Hamza Chaudhary, then all these Pakistani origin players, they can play for Pakistan, you know, and then uh, it will bring lots of attention to the uh, South Asian football, not just say Indian football. Overall, the football will grow in uh, in South Asia because that's why the 2011 championship, considering Afghanistan came and they brought lots of these Afghan origin players who was playing in Germany. Uh, in, in in Dutch league also, I think that brought lots of attention from European media also. So I think uh, Arifin, you were saying something about Hamza again. Yeah, actually, I, I, I will now refer to Shamit Shom, a Canada-based Bangladeshi footballer. He has actually already played a, a couple of friendlies for Canada senior national team. And so, as as Sharuk Bhai was uh, was saying, you know, the regarding the approach, you know, uh, Shamit Shom. Uh, in, in, in an interview, you know, confessed that BFF did approach him, but not directly, to his club. You know, when he was in uh, Montreal Impact, the Major League Soccer Club, and the club, you know, immediately closed the matter. You know, they they didn't respond back. And so, uh, what I propose is that, well, uh, you know, these these BFF officials, they they go and visit these these multiple countries, you know, uh, for for pleasure, and. Why, why don't you just go to USA, you know, pay a visit to him, you know, say that, say, say it's a, it's a, it's a family visit, you know, you go, you, you, you go self-invited, go have a dinner with him and, you know, get, get the door closed, you know, keep your hand on his shoulder and, you know, explain, you know, what he means to Bangladesh football, what, what he could achieve with Bangladesh football, what Bangladesh football, uh, you know, regarding the plans of BFF. So, you know, they won't do it. They won't do it. They're, they're just, you know, 
आपने बहुत सारे फुटबॉल पाकिस्तान डॉट कॉम आई रिमेम्बर टॉकिंग टू मिस्टर नवाज जो यूके में है आपके दोस्त हमारे कॉमन दोस्त है दोनों के वो लगे रहते हैं इस चीज में एन ई ए को फेडरेशन ने तो नहीं किया है तो ऐसा तो नहीं है कि जो प्लेयर्स हैं से पाकिस्तानी ओरिजन बांग्लादेश ओरिजन आई थिंक दे विल लव टू प्ले फॉर दियर कंट्री बट अल्टीमेटली प्लेयर्स क्या चाहते हैं फेडरेशन से या दी स्पोर्टिंग या फुटबॉलिंग जो बॉडी है रिस्पेक्टिव कंट्री में वो क्या चाहते हैं आपने बहुत सारे प्लेयर्स से बात करी है तो मुझे पता था जस्ट जानना चाह रहा था सो दे वेरी ऑनेस्ट इन दोच ऑफकोर्स यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द बिगर द प्लेयर इज यू नो द मोर रिस्पेक्ट he deserves honestly if you have someone that's coming directly from the english premier league you know you have to approach it in the right manner you need to make sure that your logistics the quality of your training areas the way you're doing everything is is on par right if someone is coming from the english premier league hamza chaudhry you know if he comes to bangladesh and then he sees that there's like a massive massive difference between what is happening and there is of course but if it's like in the not in the right sense he might get uh, disheartened so you know if these uh, players face issues they don't get support from the federation they don't get um the right logistics i i've personally encountered situations where the federation is looking at the cheapest flight option to get him out of the europe instead of what's the fastest option and imagine if a player is traveling for 17 or 19 hours and getting to your country how is he going to be in a fresh state of mind and when he re- when he knows there's a faster option and you're not getting it for him he's obviously going to be disheartened and these are like very nitty gritty issues that you face with with these players and unfortunately uh, south asian uh, players don't uh, uh, south asian federations don't tackle this properly i think getting these players will brought lots of limelight in terms of media and sponsorship in south asian football considering nowadays if you see even saf championship majority sponsors are you know from india so it 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 will bring other other Uh, uh brands and uh, other big uh, big companies to come and you know uh, to sponsor these various leagues so i think i think that's one thing infrastructure wise it need to be far better you can't have a premier league player coming to play for his national team and then he playing in a you know muddy ground and not proper uh, football pitches not while training also while playing also i think that's that's also a big difference uh between european football and south asian football at this stage uh so i think with the last part now so let's touch upon the afc cup uh the so only representative from south asia which was atk mohan bagan uh they lost yesterday 6-0 and i think uh, i was when I, mean, i put a whole thread on this on twitter that i was hoping for similar kind of result but the score line was a bit surprising for me so i'm not going to talk about the game let's talk about the afc cup and the structure and why afc always have been partial to east east south south east asia and west countries a uh, speaker of the format of the championship uh, i will start with arifin considering that he follow asian football a lot before the, all these south asian club used to be in a different different group there were chances that you know uh, our multiple south asian clubs can go to the knockout round of the uh, afc cup now they have they made this another kind of a zonal afc cup then there is zonal final i'm also confused what the format is what you say on this considering that only one south asian club can go to the knockout round now yeah well uh, it's it's disheartening really especially for the indians of course for for you bhai because you know india obviously can have both of their representatives into the knockouts and also bangladesh i mean our league is growing and we have been uh, you know you know we now have uh, boshundara kings you know they have become a heavyweight and uh, uh, if we if we remember even even you know atk atk did go past uh, boshundara king uh, into the knockout uh, but but it's still uh, you know it, uh, you know uh, boshundara king is still put a great fight with only 10 men so yes it's also for bangladesh because we too can have uh, you know both of our clubs into the knockout so you know uh, you know i mean and especially and it's especially disheartening uh, uh for for our, for us south asians uh, to to have pakistan banned because we we could have uh, we could have uh, two groups like the central asian zone you see uh, and so you know we could have uh, you know more matches you know we could have at least you know uh, you know uh, more representative into the knockout you know 
like you know we could have our own semi final uh, sharuk bhai yeah yeah so, that, that's a yeah, good thought bhai. from arifin actually but and for i don't think uh, pakistani clubs would have been hel- able to help much in this situation because uh, given our uh, beautiful record at the afc cup we used to do well in the afc presidents cup but now that's gone and our afc cup would probably end at the first game <laughs> So, ne, I just wanted to uh, touch upon also. It's not that the uh, South Asian club are not uh, capable enough. If you remember another South Asian hero, Ali Asfa Club, New Redint, they used to reach AFC semi-final knockout round very uh, on a regular basis. The the window I'm talking about is 2013 to 2017. You know when the East Bengal and some Bengaluru also did very well from India in AFC Cup. Now I, I feel this current model is not. uh because also the difference between the group stage matches and the knockout matches for example the game atk mohan bagan played yesterday and the games they played in group stage i think group stage match i think it was very blow par now all of sudden they faced a team who's playing yeah. you know a couple of level above you and it's not easy to go and then play that match when in group stage you're not playing those competitive matches uh so so this just coming to you also i think i'm not come to you for a Uh, for a while now uh, i think Nap- napoli's club also uh, played in a playoff of the afc cup what is the situation of napoli's league uh, how seriously they take uh, the afc cup and these competition yeah, yeah so the internal condition is kind of messed up we were supposed to have a league starting later this year but some of the clubs have not agreed to it and there are some genuine reasons to why they shouldn't agree to it uh, first of all um in order for any club to go in the play off of the uh cup you know you got to finish the league and with the schedule that anfa proposed for the league the league wouldn't have been finished and no club would actually go on to play those and now that they require registered clubs afc registered club i don't think there are much of many clubs that fulfill the requirement so i don't see that as a possibility only nepal police club i think has the afc accreditation as of right now and none of the other clubs even if they qualify and win the league will go on to play the uh, champ the, the playoffs so it is messed up we don't have a league as of right now and i don't see this happen it, i i see it just going on the spiral and we we did contest in the nepali super league which is not yet recognized as the top side which is like what isr used to be when it used to be in the first two years or so uh, but the equivalent of what i league is in india the a division league uh, it's not yet decided that it will happen or not yeah they they used to play some playoff matches and once three star club even went ahead and achieved something that no other club in nepal achieved but they were not able to participate because of internal reasons so it's uh, it's not a fact that clubs are not well equipped but since the federation and uh, the management is so uh, reluctant about it i don't see anything any activity from nepal happening any soon uh so just last question uh, before i will take a prediction of you that who will win the sap championship uh, so lots of south asian football f- fans have been discussing about this i think is and taking example from premier league and mls uh what do you guys think about the idea of uh, having one club from each country is in isl because considering the isl has grown into a, a kind of a league now uh sharuk bhai coming to you first uh, do you think is it, it is possible of course there lots of politics political issue also <laughs> but considering that you know uh, the, the distance is not that huge if you have say punjab mein agar pakistan ke koi club hota hai so do you think it, it it will make sense for the overall south asian football to have it something like club from pakistan bangladesh nepal maybe bhutan sri lanka and maldives we could have like a south asian club championship type thing and i know that's been proposed a couple of times that never happened india super league while you know i'm not sure of technically how that would work out but the political issues are too overwhelming uh, now when for the foreseeable future for any sort of thing that to happen but i think south asian club championship could have could be a decent idea but fitting this into a calendar you know a, a calendar somewhere that fits everyone is going to be really difficult Indian clubs, Indian clubs said no to that. The last time the topic came, you know, Indian exactly. clubs were not ready to send their main team because because they are saying they are playing in AFC Cup and are already considering the calendar which AFC follows. 
it's from you know january to december up then they have a break in between and then of course our calendar from south asia it's generally from september october our league start in march april it's finished considering the summer uh, our part of the world get it's difficult to have uh, football going on in the month of you know june and july or may also exactly. uh, and if in, what do you think about similar do, do you think a bangladeshi club uh, representing a bangladesh indian super league will make sense yeah i mean i would love to you know see that happen uh, and i have followed uh, you, your pod- podcast with uh, joe morrison and I, and i completely agree with him i mean it will attract huge you know attention you know you know not only not only in bangladesh and india but also i mean across the region and you know it will be very good to 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 have uh, boshundara kings say for example i mean they are they are they, they are one you know uh, capable of you know to to fulfill the requirements of 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 the you know of your franchise league i would love to see that happen yeah of course the franchise franchise fee is huge by the way 15 crores indian rupees <laughs> per year so of course not easy for everybody to pay uh, sudesh of course i think nepal you, because consider domestic football is not that good in nepal i think you will also uh, will be happy to have something like this arrangement with indian super league Yeah, as, as a Nepali, first things first. I would love to see any club from Nepal play any type of football. We they don't get to play football today, but yeah, it, it is a possible one. And if you consider how uh, the whole pyramid of football is to be developed, I think there there is a space where that can be considered. Uh, the clubs in the region are kind of in a similar quality, except for one or two. All the uh, clubs. that play in the top flight kind of match each other each other's quality bar india but look at how the pri- where the priorities of our nations football associations are they're not kind of going after what needs to be done to uh, uplift the region as a whole and i saw the other day that they were using statements about supporting the biennial world cup uh, structure i mean you can look at the where priorities lie of these football associations so i would love to see that but i don't see that happening the biennial world cup concept the developing countries are supporting because then there will be more biddings and you know what happened when there were lots of bidding for the world cup and uh, <laughs> lots of money get floated into the system i think that's the only reason our part of the world supporting that uh, that concept and i don't agree to the concept i think this looks a distant dream one thing which can happen i think which which is possible and should be done allow south asian uh, one south asian player to be a normal domestic player you know not allow him as a yeah. as a foreigner that will give a extra spot uh, to these isl clubs and somebody like chencho is playing now as a asian foreigner for kerala blaster i can see lots of say naples who are good players and maybe they are better than some of india's domestic player taking that one extra spot and uh, because the already now foreigners are decreased in the squad there there will be four uh, foreigners are playing 11 now uh, six in the squad by the way which will need to have one asian player if you want to sign six if you sign signing five it's need to be one have um one need to be asian so i think that that is more possible if you ask me uh, allow these uh, south asian countries players to play at least one spot give them as a normal uh, domestic player spot i think that will of course people will indian fans will say that will you know uh, decrease the chances of indian player playing more but i think that will also bring lots of attention of the people and bring competition, competition among these artists Uh, yeah in the, in the south asian relation uh, sharuk just parting thoughts on that i think that's a terrific idea it will help that uh, cross selling and cross uh, playing of all these players in south asia and not just india you know even if you have it in bangladesh i remember there were a few talks with a couple of pakistani players going over to the bangla uh, bangladesh league a couple of years ago but then the problem comes right you know there is an asian quota but there isn't a south asian quota and then they they really spoiled for choice that you have a limited option and if you have the south asian quota i think it will become very easy for the south asian players to move around in the in the region i think it's a good idea that can that can and should be discussed uh afin bhai what about you yes i i think that's that's a very good idea and i think uh uh N- nepal's league uh, you know allow it maybe a south asian quota back in 2018 and and bangladesh's uh, former under 21 international goalkeeper uh, nurul karim bhai uh, he played there in uh, in sankata club yeah. you know nepal ne- nepal made this breakthrough 
and and yet bangladesh and india are waiting <laughs> you know this, this should happen this should take place so this yeah because i think there are good number of players who can play in isl i feel from both the both all the south asian country so this any 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 thoughts on this similar thing yeah, yeah if, if you, you got to develop, develop as a region and kind of get those uh, mutual kind of thing i think it's a good way to approach that and i've seen that happen in the middle eastern region uh, from this season qatar stars league is allowing 3 plus 1 plus 1 rule in which the one added player can be an arab player so that helps to kind of uplift the whole region in its own and i think that's an alternative in south asia uh, no, uh, we watched from the indian nepal friendly that although india has a super league and all the indian players play with a lot of exposure uh, some of the quality was matched in a sense that there were some nepali players who stood out uh, in the competition and i'm i'm definitely sure there are players from bangladesh for say uh, uh, bangladesh and maldives and sri lanka that can fulfill the, that kind of quality mark so it's it's definitely an option and a considerable one i think just on a parting note uh, asian have something a similar arrangement with the japanese league if i if i remember correctly that they, they allow asian players arifin bhai can you can you touch upon something because i know these asian players thai players going to j league you know and playing j uh, second division in japanese i think they have some asian quota also in uh, in j league right yeah yeah uh, they they have they do have asian, uh, asian quota and they mostly prefer asian asian players they are coming from southeast asia so for there and okay before, you know all these players yeah, you know uh, i mean I, i know we're coming to the close and i know you wanted to really ask this question but i'm going to throw this to you because i really want to see your reaction who's going to win the saf championship 2021 uh, of course you have put me on a uh, on a tough situation uh, and as this is what know, i want to really yeah. see <laughs> as well, i lose the point in your expert expert opinion let's let without <laughs> your support a- for the indian team Yeah, so as a Indian, I want India to win it, but at this stage, it looks tough to me. I think, uh, uh, considering uh, I know Oscar uh, personally, what he has done with Sporting Club de Goa, then went to Maldives. I think it will be between Maldives or Bangladesh, and and of course, until unless Sunil Chetri has his own days and then he win the games by own for India. I think it's look like to me that Maldives and Bangladesh are going as a favorite. at least for this championship sorry to oh, my please okay. viewers and fans but you know the quality i think i think i think that's that's my opinion so uh, uh, arifin what do you what do you think about the same uh, well well i'm surprised and you know i mean pleasantly so nice to hear bangladesh from your voice i mean well i don't think <laughs> we are making it that far i mean i mean there are some issues as as i've mentioned earlier uh, well look i mean india is all a server you know regardless they are having preparation or not you know maldives a- as a host of course and then you know you, you can talk about sri lanka with with their you know three overseas options but i think you know i mean nepal should do something it is it, it, time it's time that nepal should do something they they have had a back to back you know gold gold medals from sa games you know they have won afc solidarity cup you know they have they have good players you know and you know couple of them are you know really you know have the standards you know reaching asian level you know nearly asian level like you know rohit chand nepal should do something i think the titan and and they've got a good coach nepal do something I mean, this time a, around a rebel one abdullah mutaidi i like him <laughs> I I think so if it's any time that needs to be honest, this time around honest, and I'm I'm being honest <laughs> Yeah I mean uh, he 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 mentioned Abdul Almutani and I absolutely love that guy um he he's been kind of all strings that Nepali football have attached uh, related to change have been attached to Abdul Almutani recently and Uh, considering the Nepalese national team has been uh, with him on for like five months, and they have already played twelve fixtures, which is which if you consider uh, the national team setup is quite a lot, and that kind of makes it a uh, very used to setup. And he has had the chance to slim up his squad and get who he wants. And uh, not gonna lie, if we had a finisher, we could have had decent chance to escape with a win against India in either one of those friendlies. So. 
Um, I, I think, think if Nepal, Nepal is to do something, uh, it is this chance. But these chances have occurred in the uh, past as well. Uh, as Sharuk, I mentioned about 2013, we were with Jack Stikhanovsky, and we had uh, the tournament in our own home, and we were also one of those favorites. And 2011 as well, we had Pam Roberts in our, uh, you know, dugout. But this time around, uh, things were not as the same. Uh, those uh, you know 2011 2013 we we just used to uh, throw the ball away and stuff like that but this time on things are really looking promising so considering india are also way beyond their peak because i don't think i go see max team uh, is where it should be because they can reach a higher level and pakistan is not also there and uh, bhutan can cause upsets but i i don't think they are uh, consistently hitting that mark oh uh, sorry and maldives yeah And Sri Lanka have two or three foreign players, uh, and they are also training hard. So I think it's a decent shout for Nepal to go in, and I, as a Nepali, I definitely want them to win this time around. Before Saurabh Bhai, I come to you. I, you touch upon the finisher. I remember that famous quote from uh, former FIFA president, Mr. Blatter, that if if Nepal has that Lionel Messi playing for them up front, they will win all the football matches. So, as a neutral, who are you hoping, uh, who are you supporting, and who you think going to win the championship? <laughs> so, uh, since I am practically a neutral with Pakistan not playing, but I think in analysis, uh, if we were to be very objective, India, as you said, not in the best of preparations, but you wouldn't rule rule them out. So, it's basically between Bangladesh, India, and then you have Maldives. I personally feel that. Maldives might really edge this. If I was a betting man, I, w- I would put my money on uh, Maldives since the home factor can't be ruled out. B- Maldives have that squad. Their strikers may be aging, and I think this would be a good send-off for Ali Ashfaq as well if they end up uh, winning the SAF Championship. Bangladesh, I-, I know they have a good squad as well. Uh, the new coach, I think this interim coach, in in my Pakistani experience, has never really worked out well for uh, and. If they are able to do it, I think that'll be great. But exactly if I was here. a be- be- betting man, I think Maldives would be winning the SAF Championship. I think this can be the last SAF yeah. Championship. Abhi tak India ne score announce nahi kiya. Last Championship where we will see uh, Ali Asfak, Sunil Chhetri. I am not sure of Rohit Chand. I think Possibly. he will play one more. I think this will be the last time we'll see the two legends from South Asia playing uh, in the SAF Championship. I wish Pakistan was playing. Uh, I think we miss Afghanistan also. Now, as they've joined uh, the Central Asia, I think, uh, and also there was some controversy of India also joining as an invitational country. But the FFS cleared that India is going to remain part of the South Asian Football Federation uh, because uh, we know that you know politically it's not possible for India to leave SAF and then join any other region permanently. So on that note, uh, thank you, Sarub Bai. Thank you, Arifin. Thank you, Sudesh, for joining in. uh to all our viewers and listeners uh you can listen to this episode on all the leading platform uh spotify apple uh, apple music google podcast it will be available on the all the places if you want to watch in the video form it is available on kenlaw tv on youtube channel uh we are likely to do one more episode hopefully before the championship start uh in um, early next month uh, which will be totally upon the south asian championship and by that time we hope that there will be uh, uh, uh people joining in us from uh, maldives and sri lanka maldives for sure we'll have somebody but sri lanka we are still uh, trying to find out a ideal person so if anybody from sri lanka is listening or watching you can you can you can contact us and you know uh, then we can uh have a have you guys on a show so thank you everybody uh for joining in see you soon any 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 thoughts before we sign off well ashish bhai i mean we must have uh, we must have mentioned regarding the format of uh, this edition of saf i mean it's it's a round robin round robin affair and it's not it's not knockout like yeah. like previous years so so that would mean uh, what i believe you know teams like india or maldives uh, who have you know better you know stability in terms of squad in terms of depth you know i mean they they can they should go far i mean uh, it's one important factor regarding the format i think this is only time shahrukh bhai when there's a uh, league and robin happening at saf you remember anything 
in past no i, I don't think this is, this is this is the first time this has happened and i think arifins made a very uh, very important point as well that squad depth because each team will probably play like four games if i'm not wrong and that yeah. you know three games in the saf championship are already pretty yeah. close to each other fourth game would mean that the depth of the squad becomes important and this is i think where a team like maldives can take uh, take advantage of this and india as well if they have depth in the in the squad and i think everybody is going to um, enjoy the saf championship as well we weren't able to see it happen last year because of covid so obviously it's exciting to see it back pakistan isn't playing but uh, let's hope we're here for the next edition बट आपने जवाब नहीं दिया था आप किसको सपोर्ट करोगे तो बता दो जाते हैं बस तो आई एम विद मालदीव्स ना इफ आई एम इफ आई इफ आई वाज अ बेटिंग मैन दैट्स अ बेटिंग पार्ट दैट्स स्पोर्टिंग दिल से दिल से किसको सपोर्ट करोगे या बोल तो जाते हैं सपोर्ट कर रहा होता अभी तो देखे एवरी ट्राइब आई आई स्टार्ट टू स्टिक विद वन टीम दैट टीम यू नो कम्स बैक टू हॉन्ट मी सो आई थिंक आई स्टिक विद मालदीव्स फॉर नाउ नहीं तो यू कैन यू कैन सपोर्ट नेपाल आल्सो सो दे विल दे विल लव टू हैव यू सॉरी आई एम सॉरी व्हाट बिमल करती मगर डिड टू अस ना एंड कॉस्ट अस अ प्लेस इन सेमी फाइनल आई कांट गो बैक टू नेपाल या एंड जस्ट 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 ऑन बिमल आई थिंक होपफुली ही विल बैक प्लेइंग फुटबॉल आल्सो रिकवरिंग फ्रॉम वेरी सीरियस एसीएल इंजरी सो आई वी विश हिम ऑल द बेस्ट आई थिंक इट्स गुड दैट आवर साउथ एशियन फुटबॉल हैव दीस हीरोज in their uh, in our country so that the upcoming generation have something to look forward you know i think that will help football to spread all across the uh, all across the country you know so guys thank you for joining in uh, we will see you again before the saf championship uh, so uh, likely to be i think hopefully it will be a great championship thank you guys